Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Vectorals checking in with JRO TC Team 1575J Viking Battalion, currently undefeated as they go through this day so far. So congratulations on a great run. Qualifying from skills, they've had a great skills run as well too, so we're gonna be talking a lot more about that here. Viking Battalion, a lot of great stuff to mention on this. I love the overall packaging that this robot brings. Uh, so we'll be talking about their multi-tier hangs that they have, uh, some of the software that's gone into it, and just a great overall design and build. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Alessia, let's start off with this B-tier B -tier hang that you're rocking as well too. Showcase more about the composition of it. I'd love to hear how you came up with it. Of course, so we have a four piston hang and we are tensioned downward with, uh, let's say, six set of rubber bands on each side. Uh, we had a few issues uh, within the season, mostly uh, getting our center of gravity just right to make sure we're leveled out and getting that <laughs> lower uh, beats your hang. Um, just, it's super safe. We've got 100% uh, accuracy. And then moving on to our intake, we have a two motor intake. Uh, as you can see, this one is missing at the moment. That is because in our last match, it did in fact break. But that's okay, because we have two motors, so it continued to work. And we were in a perfect shape going into the match and within the match. On your intake itself as well, so I know so you got a little bit of that bounce on there yes. for uh, talking more about that. So we make sure we can uh, clamp into the tri ball here with one, this is pretty hefty, but we also include these da this downward elastic tension with these ro uh, rubber bands here and the stopper, the metal stoppers right here. So I want to talk about the most mechanically complex feature in your robot. That's the zip ties that we have in front there. Oh, absolutely. Talk more about those. So for our, uh, our close side Auton, we want to make sure we have uh, various touching points. And so with the most engineered uh, possibility, we added these zip ties. And it is out of size right here. So as we um, as we set up for our um, autonomous, we do clip it in here and it works perfectly. Excellent to hear on that. Now I got to ask you on your uh, dual motor, is that going to be an easy enough fix for you? Like, are you going to be able to run to it into no, tomorrow? Absolutely. We made sure we packed um, enough uh, supplies for cases like this. And all we'd have to do is, you know, unscrew those two. Perfect, perfect fix. Glad to hear that. Let's pass over to Austin and talk more about your dry base and what you're doing for that. And then Austin as well too. I'd love to get more details on that. And I see you're uh, running some wall riders as well. Yeah, so our main thing with our base is we have six motors. So three on each side. And then one thing you're gonna see that's different from most other teams is their vertical. This helped with our packaging a lot so we could have room up here for the tri ball. So how we did this is if you can see in here, there's a half cut. So the motor is screwed into the half cut and the seat chair. And then this allowed us to have screw joints on every wheel that doesn't have an axle, which helps the friction a lot because we have circular inserts on the wheels, which give them a lot better free spin. You also save a little bit of weight by going that route too, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, definitely helps. Looking at the uh, the barrier on there, are you able to go over both sides? I noticed you got the sleds on your bot uh, on there. Are you able to go over both sides of your robot with the barrier pretty well? Yeah, so one thing we use to help us go over the barrier better is we use these two traction wheels in the middle, these uh, the flex wheels, but they don't actually touch the ground. So it allows us to still drift around the field nicely. But when it comes to the barrier, these get really good traction on. And then we have sleds on both sides that work really well. And when did you add in the uh, wall riders on your robot? So we kind of added in the wall riders like mid season when we saw that hitting the wall slows you down a lot. So if you can see on every point of our robot that could hit the wall, there's a free spinning gear. So if we're coming in backwards, this sticks out more than the sled. So we just bounce off it so we don't lose much speed. It also helps for auto a lot so we don't get stuck. So we talked about the B tier climb that you have, but I also noticed you have a side climb as well too. So talk to me more about yeah, that. Yeah, so one main thing is we didn't want to just have one hang because then if our alliance also hangs like this, we're out of luck. So we added, we had the C channel already here because it's for getting the win point, getting the tri ball out of the corner. And then we were like, how can we also use this to climb? So because this is so far back and the robot center of gravity is pretty centered, we had to add this 
piece of bendable part and it presses up against it. And then this standoff kind of grabs the edge. And then once we balance, you can put them in, it pulls it in, which then helps center the robot better so it doesn't slide. Nick, as a driver, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your mat strategy, how you're going about. Obviously, you've been so successful here at Vex World so far as well, too. So talk to me more about that. And we got a little bit of software to cover as well. So our match strategy, mainly for Worlds right now, is just bowling. So we saw the tactic that shooting over wasn't the greatest because multiple teams have these bended wings that can push all the tri balls back over. And bowling gives us the most secure way to hold the tri ball and score effectively. Uh, it's also good that we have the wall riders so we can go through the barrier and or go through the tunnel and over the barrier so we can defend, so we can juke out the other defenders. Very cool. And something I'll ask you, looking into playoffs uh, tomorrow, is there anything that you think might change in regards to your math strategy? Anything you're saving for playoffs at all? Um, more more of defense, I think. Uh, I feel like if we get a good alliance and play more defense and offense, like switching theoretically and bowling both at the same time, being able to have the uh, score scoring at a high pace, I think we should be able to get it. Go, go far. Um, I know there's one or two touch points on software you, you wanted to mention too, so tell me more about that. So I use Vex Code as our software. Uh, we have all four autos. We have a close side AWP, far side AWP, and we also have a far side elimination seat and then a close side eliminations code. So all codes for all any part of the uh, any part of the autos. Uh, I do want to ask you for a team that's done really well at skills as well too. Uh, anything in particular from Autonomous in regards to uh, your skills matches? Uh, for what we did is we used to have a flywheel for autonomous when we did rank the skill score. So we just turned on the flywheel and just shot a over and then just went through the barrier and pushed as much as we could in. Uh, I think that was the best tactic in getting a high skill score to get here through autos. Uh, last thing I want to ask you, we talked about the uh, dual motor intake, but I also see a dual receiver as well too. Uh, so I'd love to just hear more about your decision to go uh, with that. Uh, is it in case one gets knocked off or just tell me more yeah, about that? Throughout the season, we've been having uh, radio problems where one falls off and then we won't be able to play the rest of the match. So if we have two, that gives, give us, gives us a liability. So if one falls off, we still have another one to keep playing. Well, Viking Battalion, first off, congratulations on a great run so far. We can't wait to see how you do here. But thanks for telling us more about your robot. Lots of great things teams can learn from. And we can't wait to see how you do here at Bexworlds. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.